The sales process is one of the things we've looked at in detail. And we've covered uh, the sales process, we've looked at the statistics, and we literally pulled it apart um, and said, okay, what's really working in the sales process? And of course, you know, that's a tough question because uh, you know, one, I had a hard time finding out what the sales process was. Everybody's got their own version of it. And so we created a sales process because it wasn't able to get it really clear um, and make it very um, quantifiable. Then what we did is we said, look, um, let's study all of the other trainers. Let's study everything that we hear about sales and all the different ways that people are applying this information and see what really works all the time. Because if somebody gives me a tactic, technique or something, it has to work all the time, not just part of the time. Because if, otherwise it's not really a valid uh, uh, kind of situation. We're looking for principles that really work in sales all the time. So we had to go through and collect a lot of information. Now here's some of the stuff that we found out. Number one is that the sales process has really changed. Um, you know, it's changed from the fact that, uh, you know, years ago, way back when, you know, the sales process really came in to focus back in the 1800s, late 1800s, uh, with the National Cash Register Corporation actually started this. Uh, that, you know, was a process and the fundamental principles were that they would turn around and talk about the benefits to the client. Now, we've done a lot of training and I've talked to a lot of salespeople. And I got to tell you, benefits are something that people don't usually get. And they're different than all of the other things, but if you're not hearing what I'm saying, if you don't understand what I mean, the benefit is the emotional gain that the client gets. Because the sales process is an interesting thing. What it really does is it actually takes the buyer through a process and where they're logically um, understanding what they want to buy or do and what they need, and then they have their emotions kick in and then the emotions need to be managed. And at some level they need to be matched. Now we always say that buyers are liars or buyers are this or buyers are that or buyers buy based on emotion. That's partially true. We're going to get to that a little bit later, but I'll give you a clue. Um, buyers buy when the emotions and the logic, they get together and they match. So in the sales process, we had to ask ourselves, does that really take place with what we're seeing? And it did occasionally, but it didn't do it all the time. And so that really left uh, the whole process um, distorted. It was really distorted. So we started pulling this out and pulling that out and we got down to a raw core of what we understand for the sales process. Simply enough said, the sales process is not about manipulation. It's really about guiding the buyer through the process of getting what they want. Our job is to do that and we need to be able to understand that that's the thing that's going to make things happen. The other thing that we understood or what we noticed as well when we did our research was the sales process was either you know, on or off. And it was never really just moderately moving up the scale for most people. They either made it happen or didn't make it happen. So hot and cold sales or, you know, those kinds of things where you're doing the same thing every day, but one day you get it, the next day you don't, that was normal. It was normal all across the board. Now there's an odd person that's been in sales a long, long time, um, you know, kind of like myself when I got into sales, that kind of naturally figured it all out. Um, the it and when you do figure that out you can't explain it but you just know when it's right you're still trusting your gut and you're kind of doing intuition I believe most of us get to a stage where we learn a little bit better and we do improve over time but we do hit a ceiling and the ceiling limit on what goes on there is really just by natural instinct and that doesn't work well enough you need to know exactly what step you're at or it doesn't work I mean, if a doctor was to turn around and say to a patient, you know, I can perform this exercise, you know, I've done it before, no problem, and he really didn't have a step-by-step -step procedure that he was following, would you feel confident? I wouldn't. I wouldn't even be close to confident. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be even in going to that hospital or that doctor anymore. I'd be like, are you crazy? There's got to be a step-by-step -step procedure, what you're doing to make this come to the, the end result of what I get out of this in the sense of a proper, healthy you know, recovery. Uh, and I don't want to just have you um, ad hoc kind of feel your way through this and see what happens. So we have to know that the sales process needs to be that deliberate and that designed that we can actually perform that. And if we're not, of course, that's going to create some problems. Now, we also discovered that the sales process was very confusing for most people. It became so uh, messy that it was extremely difficult for most of us to understand what we were doing, when we were doing it, and how. And it'd be kind of slurred all together and made a big glob on a table, if you will, if it was uh, the, the process. And it was not appealing 
at all. And even though we shouldn't get frustrated with that, there is no way to stop yourself to do that, but then get frustrated because one minute it seemed like you knew what you were doing and the next minute, well, that didn't work at all. And so we had no idea what was going on. So that's just not going to work at all. So we want to get rid of the messy and make it clean, neat, and easy to understand. Um, because, you know, what I found out is that salespeople, unique as they are, they're filled with integrity and they like to do good work. So the sales process has to match what they're believing to be true. And if not, they're not going to use it. I mean, it's very, very simple. Uh, they'll put their own resistance and such in place. So that's what we have for the sales um, you know, process. Now, think about this. If you had a clear, you know, concise, step-by-step -step type of methodology that you used in your sales process, what would that do to that? I mean, just like you having in your car, where you, you know, get into the car, you put your seatbelt on, you put the key in the ignition, you turn the key, you start the car, release the key so it can run, you put your foot on the brake, and then you turn it on, pop it into gear, and then you start to move. You know, there's a sequence of events that you must do to get that car to move. Same as, the, as it is in the sales process. You know, if you were to turn around and uh, jump into the car and stick the key in the ignition and put the foot to the, on the gas before you even touch the brake, you'd never be able to get it into gear in most of our new cars. So that would create a problem. You'd be in park revving like crazy. And sometimes that's what we do in our sales process is we rev like crazy. We never get anywhere that we want to go. So we want to make sure that we got to stop the nonsense and get really clear about the process. It's important to know exactly what that is. Um, and so we're going to be talking a lot more about that as time goes by, but that's the nugget for today.